So Jim Pat asked on one of my prior YouTube clips, can you please do a question on autoimmune disease and their respective autoantibodies? Sure. Okay, so that's what we've done here. The challenge from my end is keeping this discussion concise, not making this a 39-minute clip because there's a lot we can chat about. Before we get started, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Help grow this channel. Share it with one of your friends who's prepping for USMLE. Hit the like button. Let's help out this annoying YouTube algorithm. Hit the bell if you want notifications. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, and the link is down below. Now, let's start the fucking question. 42-year-old woman, six-month history, generalized, pruritus, progressive fatigue, vitals are normal, physical exam normal, brother has ulcerative colitis, abdominal ultrasound shows a stone in the gallbladder, and we have some laboratory values. The hemoglobin is low, 9.8 grams per deciliter, normal range. 12 to 17.5 grams per deciliter in menstruating women, 13 to 17.5 non-menstruating women and men. ALP elevated at 300 international units per liter, the normal range 50 to 150. Total bilirubin elevated, 2.0 milligrams per deciliter. Should be, total bilirubin should be about one. Direct bilirubin elevated 1.6 milligrams per deciliter. It should be about 10% of total, should be about 0 0.1. This is a classic as textbook presentation as it gets for primary biliary cirrhosis, okay? All of the NBME questions I've seen, step one, step two, online, offline, the US simile is going to give you for PBC, a woman, 20s to 50s, who has generalized pruritus and high cholesterol, we have a stone in the gallbladder, that's our high cholesterol, who has high ALP, high direct bilirubin, this reflects bile duct obstruction, okay? And there's going to be, and this is the important part, they're going to mention autoimmune disease either in the patient's history or in the family history. So they can say the brother has pernicious anemia, the brother has Hashimoto, the brother has ulcerative colitis, or they can say the patient also has rheumatoid arthritis, or the patient has history of de Quervain thyroiditis. USMLE loves you to know that autoimmune diseases go together. So when they make this type of question, not about antibodies, but about what's the diagnosis, and they have answers that are not autoimmune diseases, when they give you the autoimmune disease findings in the vignette, family member or in the patient's history, they're really pushing on you that this is an autoimmune disease scenario, okay? So hemoglobin's low here. This is anemia of chronic disease, okay? And... We're just going to look at the antibodies now. Once again, this could be a 39-minute discussion, but we're going to keep this concise. Choice A, Cienca, wrong fucking answer. This refers to Wegener granulomatosis, which is actually the former name. It's now cumbersomely known as granulomatosis of polyangiitis. It's a vasculitis. Vignette will give you necrotizing glomerulonephritis, so red urine, hematuria, plus hemoptysis, plus colloquially a head-itis is how I call it, which just means a head finding, like mastoiditis, otitis, sinusitis, nasal septal perforation. Choice B, Pianca, wrong answer. This could refer to Churg-Strauss, eosinophilia, asthma-like presentation, renal insufficiency. It's also vasculitis, could be microscopic polyangiitis, which will be simply red urine. Pianca can also be seen in things like uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis, okay? Uh, but that's not the answer here. There's no reason to think that this patient actually has ulcerative colitis, okay? And despite the brother having it, this can be tricky for USMLE, all right? And it's also notable that Pianca finding is not a mandatory association with uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis. If this patient had blood in the stool, then we would think of potentially Pianca as the answer. Not super easy, okay? Not every question has to be super easy. Choice C, Joe 1, wrong answer. So this is going to be polymyositis, dermatomyositis. Polymyositis is going to give you either increased CK, creatine kinase, and or muscle weakness on physical exam in someone who has autoimmune disease. If that's polymyositis, so much we can talk about. Because polymyalgia rheumatica, okay, another autoimmune disease, you're not going to have an elevated CK and you're not going to have muscle weakness on physical exam. It tends to just be pain and stiffness. Uh, dermatomyositis will give you the skin findings, such as uh, a heliotrope rash. I call it the inverse uh, tanning booth rash, where you go to a tanning booth, 
and you have the goggles on, so your eyes are white, the rest of your face is red. It's the opposite. The heliotrope rash will give you violaceous eyelids or red uh, red skin around the eyes, er erythematous skin around the eyes, but the rest of the face is white. Students confuse that with lupus, okay? Nothing to do with malar rash. You should know the heliotrope rash is dermatomyositis. You can get Gotrin papules on the hands. You can get Canix hands, which are scaling hands. Some students think it's fungal infection. It's not fucking fungal. It's dermatomyositis, okay? So that's Joe one. Anti-microsomal refers to Hashimoto. Uh, this is also known as antithyroperoxidase, okay? And we can get antibodies against thyroglobulin as well in Hashimoto. Of course, that's hypothyroidism. You'd have an elevated TSH, decreased serum T3, T4, decreased iodine uptake into the thyroid gland. We'd have a, uh, a leukocytic, a lymphocytic infiltrate into the thyroid gland on biopsy. You assembly likes that. Choice E, anti-mitochondrial, is our correct answer because this is primary biliary cirrhosis. And as I said, we have a patient 20s to 50s with generalized pruritus due to the uh, bilirubin depositing in the skin. She has high cholesterol, high ALP, high bilirubin, autoimmune disease in the family or in her history. That's classic PVC, okay? Anti-mitochondrial antibodies. Anti-smooth muscle refers to autoimmune hepatitis, okay? So if they, you might say, hmm, but aren't the presentations similar? How am I going to differentiate? They are similar. This is why it's hard, okay? They would definitely give you high ALT slash AST in the vignette if they wanted if they wanted autoimmune hepatitis, okay? So I didn't give you those findings here. The implication being they're not abnormal, okay? So if they wanted autoimmune hepatitis, they're going to give you elevated transaminases. So if you were having trouble distinguishing and saying, well, how am I supposed to know which one it is though? Um, we would have elevated transaminases if this were autoimmune hepatitis. Generally a woman in her twenties or thirties, uh, they can mention autoimmune disease in her history, the family history, but they'll definitely give you uh, transaminitis for that, okay? That's anti-smooth muscle. The final answer, tissue transglutaminase IgA, that's celiac, okay? So celiac, you can have anti-endomyceal, which is also known as anti-gliadin, uh, and then the anti-tissue transglutaminase, anti -tissue transglutaminase IgA, very high yield. Of course, celiac disease, gluten intolerance, and you're going to have flattening of the intestinal villi, okay? You can sometimes get skin findings such as dermatitis or pediformis. Uh, you can get iron deficiency anemia. That's really high yield, especially 2CK pediatrics. When you're having trouble distinguishing celiac from lactose intolerance, they love uh, iron deficiency anemia for celiac because you have malabsorption in the duodenum from the flattening of the villi, and that's where iron is absorbed, okay? A lot we can talk about. As I prefaced, we could make this a 39-minute clip, but I know you guys want me to keep this somewhat concise. So you know the deal. I'm going to make more content sporadically if you like my stuff. Subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.